I'm Dr. Raj Shah, founder of Math Plus Academy, where we offer online math classes to kids from age 5 to 15. And I'm here with another math treat. Just some fun math you can do at home. It goes like this. Today's challenge is we are going to try and color in these dots that I have here with as few colors as possible. And what I mean by that is when we have two dots that are connected, we're not going to allow them to have the same color. And then the question is, how many colors are required? What is the fewest number of colors required to color in any of these images? So let's try the first one at the top. You might start by coloring in the first dot purple. Great. Now, of course, the second dot cannot be purple because they're connected. So maybe I'll use red. If I'm trying to do this in the fewest number of colors possible, I could certainly choose another color, but I don't need to. I could go back and use purple. So I can use purple again. And you can probably see what's going to happen here. You might have figured this out already. But I can go back to red, and then purple, and then red again. Just like that. And I'm done. I have solved this puzzle. There's no way to do this in fewer than two colors. So we, in math, we have a term for this. It's called the chromatic number. It's just the fewest number of colors required to fill in any of these. So the chromatic number for this is two. That's it. Uh, let's play around with the next one. So this little triangle where each of the vertices is connected, we might again start with purple. And then up there, I might choose red. And now you can see that I can't follow that same pattern of purple, red, purple, red, because now this one cannot be purple. It also cannot be red. So I need a third color. So maybe I choose green. And so the chromatic number of that triangle is three. Now the chromatic number is going to depend on the number of dots you have and also how they're connected. If you add connections or remove connections, that can change the chromatic number. So I'll let you try these and see what you come up with. You might see a pattern here, three, four, five. It's like a triangle, a square, a pentagon. You could even keep going and see if you find any patterns with that. So that's my first little extension challenge for you is see what happens if you keep going that direction uh, with the chromatic number of those puzzles. Another thing is for any given set of dots, like here I have five, and here I have that same arrangement of five that haven't connected them yet, you might get a different chromatic number. So I don't, I'll let you do this one for yourself, but I wonder if I connect them in a different way maybe like this, will the chromatic number be the same or will it be different? If I, and then even more, I could have, even add more lines. Maybe I could add this and that. I could add this back in. And that's another one. Does that have the same chromatic number? Uh, a neat question to ask is, can you just tell what the chromatic number is from just looking at the puzzle? So some of these questions have answers and some of them people haven't figured out yet. So you might be the person that figures it out. And then I just want to share with you this one real quick. We can try coloring this in and I just want to give you a little warning, I guess, as I always do, I'll start with purple. And now I have a choice. I could go here or there. Uh, maybe I choose to go here and do red. And now if I go across, uh, I'm going to try and minimize the number of colors right off the bat. So I'm not going to choose a third color. I'm going to go with purple again. And if I make that purple, here's that triangle just like we had there. So that's going to have to be another color. Maybe I'll go with green. And then where should I go next? I can go here. Oh, wow. This is connected to purple and to red and to green, which means I need another color. So I need an orange maybe. And then that last one, I could do red or purple. It doesn't really matter. So I'll do purple. And so right now, it looks like I've used four colors. Well, I certainly have used four colors. But the question you have to ask yourself is, is there another way I could have done this and, and done it with fewer colors? So try that. See if you can do better than four. Re redo this on your own paper and see if you can beat my score of four. So that's another challenge for you. So I have one more challenge for you, and it is this picture here. 
You might be thinking, what is this thing? It's got these different colors on it. What does it represent? What's going on there? Well, what's fascinating about this, and this is all related to the, the challenge I just gave you, but amazingly, this is a weird representation of the United States where every single region that's colored in represents one of our 48 contiguous states. And my challenge for you, and I had a lot of fun doing this, I learned about this problem from Chris Bolognese, an amazing math educator, and he tells me he got this from the Julia Robinson Math Festival, so I'll make sure I include a link to that as well. Um, the, there are amazing folks there as well. But can you, can you figure out where the 48 states are in this picture? It's a really cool puzzle, and I challenge you to try it. I will say, as a, a sort of hint or caution, if you count up the number of things here, you'll find that there's 49. And we only have 48 states in the United States in the contiguous United States, not counting Alaska and Hawaii. So I will tell you that that 49th piece, it could be a body of water. You know, the, the United States has surrounded by some bodies of water. So think about that as you kind of go through there. But that's a little hint to get you started. I will post uh, a printable version of this so that you can download it and print it out or, or put it on your screen and write over top of it on your mobile device. But that's a super cool, fun challenge. So uh, hope you guys enjoy this math treat. Until that next time, have fun and keep playing with math.